Hi everyone, so today I'm back after a bit of a break and today I want to talk about a topic that I have argued about with a few of my friends um, over the past couple of weeks. Obviously, spoilers ahead, though by this point, if you haven't watched the movie yet, you probably don't really care that much about spoilers anyway. So the question that I want to answer today is, is Thanos right about the reasons for ecological collapse? in his society and in our society that we're seeing today. So a quick recap, Thanos basically wants to get the Infinity Gauntlet so that he can halve the number of people who are living in the universe so that the resources that they have are more evenly distributed among everybody else and everyone else just feels a bit wealthier. So now the question is, is Thanos right? Well, Thanos isn't really the first person to advocate this sort of idea. In fact, he comes from a long line of thinkers who have been thinking about the idea of whether or not there are too many people in the world at whatever point in time they are thinking in. So this type of thinking of population control is called Malthusianism. And it stems from a guy called Thomas R. Malthus. So Malthus was a scholar in the 1700s. And in 1798, he publishes an essay on the principle of population. And in this essay, he states, and I quote, The power of population is indefinitely greater than the power in the earth to produce subsistence for man. What Malthus is basically saying is, we don't have enough resources to support all the people who are living on the planet now. So lots of people discuss these ideas, and in 1932, a biologist called Paul R. Erling is born. And he basically carries on the tradition of Malthusianism, and he enters a phase called Neo-Malthusianism. Neo being a fancy way of saying new. And in 1968, Erling publishes a book called The Population Bomb. And in it, he says that, The battle to feed all of humanity is over. In the 1970s, hundreds of millions of people will starve to death in spite of any crash programs embarked upon now. At this late date, nothing can prevent a substantial increase in the world death rate. So Malthus and Ehrlich are basically saying, we don't have enough resources, it's the end of the world. And so looking at all the environmental ills that we have in the world today, from climate change, to mass pollution, to ocean acidification, it's tempting to say, well, the problem is the population is too high. But is that actually the right thing that we should be saying? I believe that in theory, Ehrlich, Malthus, and Thanos are all partially correct. Why is this so? Well, it stems back to an equation that Paul Ehrlich basically coined when he was thinking about this issue, and it's called I equals PAT, or IPAT. What this means is that the environmental impact of any population is its population multiplied by its affluence or how much money it has, and the technology. So looking at the non-population factors first, the more technology you have access to, the faster you can basically get resources and create environmental damage. For example, last time you had to use an axe to chop down a tree, but now you have a chainsaw that can basically do it in half the time. And affluence, because the richer you get, the more stuff you can afford to purchase and the more sort of materials and resources people go out to find because they have the money to do so. Now onto the population part, and this is the crux of the question. Does more population create more environmental damage? So numbers do matter to some extent. The extent is debatable depending on which of the three variables is the most important in the equation, but it plays a part. So when we look at this diagram here, it kind of gives us an idea of the way that the population has changed in the past. In the 1800s, when Malthus was writing, we had 1 billion people. 150 years after Malthus, we doubled that and added a bit. So we were about one and a half times bigger at 2.5 billion people. Now 50 years after that, we more than doubled the population size and we, we hit 6 billion people. That's a lot more people who are walking the earth looking for food, for housing, for metals, for their iPhones and laptops, and for avocados for their toast. As you can see, we've reached the point where the population is starting to slow down in its growth, but it's still increasing. And by 2050, we're going to have about 9.5 to 9.7 billion people walking this planet with us. As the population has increased, so has the environmental impact that we've had upon the planet. So climate change is a very, very recent phenomenon. And in some senses, the carbon dioxide growth graph mirrors the way that the population graph has exploded over the past 50 years. So if population is a problem, and I tend to think that it is, how do we go about solving it? Well, in his treatise in 1798, Malthus basically raised two ways that we could deal with this issue, and both are relevant today. He proposed positive checks, which included things like raising the death rate, and negative checks, which included things like reducing the birth rate. So Thanos is basically running full tilt down the path of the positive checks that Malthus proposes. So obviously in today's society, that isn't really a viable option and you can't go around just killing half the population. So we're left with the negative checks and that's things like reducing the birth rate. And we've seen that these have been effective over the past 20 to 30 years with the growth rate slowing down. A lot of this reduction is premised on women becoming more educated, having greater access to contraception. And it's in countries that are still developing, getting access to education where the most gains are yet to be made and where the battle on whether the population grows too fast is going to be fought over the next 20 years. 
So then some of my friends have taken issues with the way that Thanos solved things given that he had unlimited power. And one of those comments was, Hey, if you're so smart, how come Thanos didn't just snap his fingers and double or make unlimited resources for everybody on the planet? And I think that's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. Because if you have excess resources, what you see is basically that the population is going to increase in tandem with those resources without the right education. Well, if you think about it in sort of a rabbit example, if you have a bunch of rabbits and a small amount of food, some of the rabbits will starve and they won't multiply as fast because a lot of them are dying out because there's not enough food. If you double the amount of food, the rabbits are going to be like, yeah, let's get it on. And they're going to have like double the amount of rabbits in a really short amount of time. So doubling the amount of resources isn't really the answer or long-term solution because at the end of the day, the population is just going to keep increasing until it runs out of food. Education and spreading awareness about different lifestyle choices is, in my opinion, more important. Hey, don't have kids, kids. Another thing that I was thinking about was just why not remove all the greenhouse gases and then climate change goes away. Well, climate change goes away but not the number of people. And if you think about it, there are a lot of other problems that you will run into as the population continues to expand, even without climate change. You're gonna run out of space to grow your vegetables, your food, you're gonna run out of space to live, you're gonna run out of water. Something's gonna run out at some point in time if the population gets too high. So the reality of the situation is this. On this planet, there's a fixed amount of resources and there's a fixed amount of population that can live off these resources. And if you go above this limit, you're gonna start finding some nasty environmental things that are gonna be happening to you. So yes, in my opinion, Thanos is right. So the last thing that I was thinking about was if Thanos snapped his fingers and kill half of all the living things that includes vegetables which are living things and they're just gonna go poof and we're not gonna have enough food anyway and I don't really think they thought that through but aside from that I broadly agree with Thanos and I think he's doing the right steps in order to ensure that there's prosperity in the long term for the people who are left on the planet since we can't execute mass genocide and it wouldn't be ethical anyway it's better that we just reduce the number of births that are happening and try and manage and basically keep the boat afloat until the time when our population starts dipping again so that's all for this episode if you disagree with my thinking throw it in the comments below like a good internet person if you like this video please like it and if you want to share this idea and thinking more people just share the video with all your friends all right that's all for this one and i'll catch you guys in the next video see ya